Hi guys, and welcome to The Duplex, a podcast by Demo Blank. I'm your host, Saranga, and on this show, we interview artists, architects, musicians, filmmakers, dancers, anybody from a creative background to tell their stories and share interesting bits of knowledge that you guys might find helpful. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce today's guest, my good friend, Morgan Lilly. If you live in LA, you may have seen Morgan on various billboards around Highland Park. Morgan is a filmmaker, a writer, a model, and a teacher. We had a really great conversation today, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Yeah, I know. But that's what happens when you have a lot of hair. True that. You know. I'm getting a mullet tomorrow. What? Yeah. <laughs> For like a shoot or just because? No, it's like just because I want one. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Do I have to like do anything in this? Stuff? Oh, new audio. Wow, this is easy. Good. Do I sound? Hold up. Yeah, you sound Wait, good. Wait, talk? Yeah, you could talk. Oh my god, it's doing the fucking thing. Wait, I need like... Can I use your headphones, Matt? Yeah. No, it's okay, I'm using the mic. But I need headphones that have an, an a jack, a headphone jack. This is always what happens. It makes everyone sound like a gremlin. Okay. Oh, interesting. I, I don't know. I have headphones plugged into is my Is it worth it? Too. Wait. Hold up. Oh my god. What? Was it even fucking worth it? All of this damn work. Here we go. Talk now. I'm, okay, yeah. Yeah, I can... can't fucking hear anything. Oh, you can't hear anything? It's not... now? Oh, wait, go. Uh, say anything. Oh, and now I can. Okay, bet. My volume was down. Oh, that was my own fault. Classic. Cool. Classic. Now I've got like the sweet. I can hear myself, which is interesting. Oh, because you can get the feedback. Yeah. That's cool. I'm g- I'm hearing all of my little mouth sounds, which is not gross at all. Uh, <laughs> let me turn it this way. Oh, you can't hear me now. Wait, I think I can... this is the direction. Oh, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. I, I know that the mic this... has different inputs and stuff. Yeah. That's I don't all. know how I sound on this really. Cause you sound good. I have headphones in now, so I'm just like, well. You sound solid. I think this sounds better. I can hear it because nice. at first it was a little punchy. I don't want to hear my mouth so much. I just want to hear my voice. You're supposed I, to aim it at the throat. I, I can't hear your uh, mouth if that makes you feel better. <laughs> I can. I'm hyper focused, oh. but it's we're all good now. We're all good. Let's do this fucking thing. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> psyched. Oh my god, I'm so nervous because you've literally given me no context. You were just like, do you want to show up and do this thing? Oh, and yeah. I said, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's just going to be a chill, casual podcast. Just I expect nothing less from you, Saranga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if there's one thing I know about you, everything that you do is very chill. So yep, yeah. that's cool. All right. We can get started whenever. I'm here. I'm plugged in. Sweet. Low pressure. We're just, we're just fucking hanging. Yeah. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Um, all right, all right well, like... I wrote up this nice little intro for you, so I might as well read it now, even though I'll read okay. it later. And if I'm wrong about oh. anything, you could just be like... I can correct you. You could okay. be like, that's an incorrect fact. Then it wouldn't be a fact. You're right. It would just be incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Go. Okay, go shows, for it. Shows what I know about English. I like I said I, I'm I'm quite good I'm quite good that's like one of the one things I didn't fail in high school so yeah I mean you're smart you know you you went you showed up how did you what the fuck <laughs> I did, but I, was I awake I don't know I mean I definitely wasn't I feel that anyway all right so um to everybody listening welcome to the duplex uh, a podcast by Demo Blank, where we bring on our friends, artists, creative people uh, from all walks of life, architecture, 
fashion, filmmaking, to just tell their stories. And today I'm super psyched to have our good friend, my good friend, Morgan Lilly on. Um, if you guys live in LA, you might recognize Morgan from the billboards around Highland Park. If any of you shop at Big Bud Press, you might recognize Morgan. Uh, Morgan is a model, she's a writer, a filmmaker, and the co-host of the podcast Clue, the collective learning and unlearning experience. If you haven't checked it out, checked it out. I would highly recommend it. Um, I will say we haven't recorded in like three months. I don't know if that podcast is still happening. Though I've definitely wanted to do another podcast or make that happen someday soon. But it's been a chaotic uh, 2021, as I'm sure everyone can agree. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wild times. Wild times. So, yeah, that podcast was definitely a brainchild that has had some stunted growth, if you will, for now. <laughs> but who knows? It might come back. It might come back. I, I fully believe when the time is right, I will re-enter the podcast cast sphere. But so far, I'm just trying to not uh, lose my mind every day. So I think that that's probably a very important focus for me to have more than anything. Yeah. Well, Morgan, thanks so much for coming on, agreeing to do this. I know we've been trying, we've been playing tag on this for like months. Yeah, it's true. It's I thank you for having me. Oh, of course. Yeah, so I'm really, I've been a big fan of Demo Blank since its origin, you know. I was there that opening, that opening night back when you guys had an actual physical space, so... I really love what you guys do, and I'm glad to be a part of this community in whatever way that I can be, you know. Um, I'm always just, like, so shocked that people, like, think about me for things, so I feel honored. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, when I was making a list of people, you were right there at the top. I was like, oh, Aww. I was doing cool stuff. God, I it's, it's so funny because um, I think people often talk to me about the work that I do. Um, like the modeling I do and the, you know, stuff I create. And I feel like I'm not even like as a, as a person, I'm so much more focused on like my mental health than I am like what external things I'm doing with my life. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing with my life ever. Like I, I literally have no clue. And it's funny cause everyone else is like, you're doing so much stuff. I'm like, um, or do you mean taking my meds every day? Cause like. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> it's like taking my meds, drinking water. Um, I don't know. Like, um, I mean, I guess that's like definitely some imposter syndrome stuff where it's like, you know, the the prime example of like doing something and then being like, I didn't do anything. I haven't accomplished anything. I'm not good at anything, um, which I know isn't true, but um I don't know. Either either way, I'm not trying to diminish your your feelings about me because I really do respect and value them. Uh, but I'm like, am I always doing cool stuff? Like, I don't know. I don't I don't really think about it that way. I think because I just spend most of my time with my cat and like watching TLC. <laughs> no, I trust me. <laughs> From my end, you're always doing cool stuff. I love that. I love these false narratives that I've been able to swindle people into thinking about myself. Well, I, you know, I don't know if they're false narratives because I feel like you, you, uh, you really openly, especially on social media, like you really mm. talk about like your mental health, like on a daily yeah. basis, and you make That's it true. like you make it really okay for people to be like, oh yeah, like yeah, this is cool to talk about. Yeah, I do. I do feel like if nothing else is to come of my life, this that'll probably be my greatest work. I mean, I definitely kind of wish I had a bigger reach some days. Um, like my dream is to have a successful podcast or like, I want to be like a TV show, like a talk show host. Like I think about that all the time, like Wendy Williams, but not tragic, you know, like not someone who talks shit about people for a living. <laughs> um, <laughs> cause I, I do feel like that's, I think, um, like being open is, is like my biggest gift, I guess I'd say. Um, and so it's cool that someone else thinks that that's 
work because it feels like work to me. But I think that in the grand scheme of like life and capitalism, like that isn't really considered work, you know, like I'm not necessarily profiting off of it. And I'm not necessarily um, I don't like show up every day for a job <laughs> to like talk about my mental health. I'm just like kind of um, trying to connect with people, mm -hmm. you know, and make things like you said, make things seem OK and. I think that um, externalizing my experience is something that's really easy for me. And I know it's really valuable to other people. Mm -hmm. So it's a really big priority for me to engage with that as often as possible. Because I know that I've helped, I've helped people, you know, I've had people message me. And um, I think that really makes me feel very validated to know that it's impactful. And I'm not just, like, in this, like, you know, la-la land in my own head, like, thinking that I'm doing something and, like, I'm not actually doing something. I think that's what it feels like a lot of the time. Um, so it's nice to know that that other people feel that way and that you feel that way. So that feels really good. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Also, I'm sorry if I'm talking too much. I have ADHD. I know this is a fucking podcast. And, like, that's the whole point. But, like... I feel like I talk over people so fucking much, and I'm so sorry if oh, that's the oh, thing that starts happening. You know me. You, you know I'm, like, down to just, like, not say anything for extended periods of time. So, like, that's what we're friends, Saranga. <laughs> I will talk for hours, and you'll sit there and nod and be like, that's chill. <laughs> yeah, straight up. So. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, but that's really cool to hear that you have people DMing you, messaging you, to mm -hmm. be like, hey, like, I resonate with what you're saying. And yeah, that's got to be a pretty crazy feeling after you just shared something vulnerable or like, mm -hmm. that you're like that wasn't maybe it wasn't fun to share. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm yeah. pretty curious, like more like I don't know exactly when you started doing posts like that, mm -hmm. but I I would imagine that despite like a natural inclination to connect with people, it is like a daunting thing to be like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to post my experience of like what it's like to be my head on social that, media yeah so it's actually really interesting because i feel like i've always been i think it's it's i don't know it started when i was born like that's what it feels like <laughs> it's when i was born i had this thing no but when i was younger i feel like i've always been the kind of person who um I don't know, my parents used to tell me, like, oh, don't think too much or you'll hurt yourself. Like, you know, like, I was always, like, really deeply processing a lot of stuff and talking a lot and openly about what was going on with me. Um, and um, I think that there was kind of this natural progression when I started making films and getting into photography, especially when I started making films, which are, you know, narrative. They are things that you do over a long period of time um for most people i don't know i'm pretty i have a weird process of filmmaking but um i think that when i got to college i've i've already I've, blah, blah, blah. I've always been such a uh, like a deeply internal processing kind of person and um when i got to college a lot of my films were about my personal experience um i was always making films about like how I was feeling. I was always writing about how I was feeling. And, um, you know, even when I was in like high school, I was in like an underground writing group, which was like pretty fucking cool. I felt very special when I was in that group. Um, but I've, I've always like every piece of work I've ever made artistically has been about me. It, I cannot, I can't make <laughs> work about other people. I just fucking can't. Um, it's always about me, what I'm feeling, what I'm processing. Um, I try to write from other people's perspectives. It doesn't happen. And so I think that when I got to college, I definitely struggled with that because that's not how other people make films. You know, that's not how, especially in the filmmaking realm, you're always, you know, it was it was always so personal for me that even the films I was writing, I was the main star. Like I was the like the person in the film, you know, when I, excuse me, after I started, cause I started off with experimental work, which was very like 
experimental processing of whatever feelings I was having. But then once I started getting into narrative, it was very literal. Like, it was very literal. Like, I am doing this thing. I feel this way. And um, filmmaking is often about, like, kind of taking an amalgamation of feelings and, like, you know, like, usually films aren't about, like, the director or the writer. Like, liter like quite literally. You know, it's, like, some kind of thing morphed into this other experience that's more easily digestible for other people because you're, you know, it's a placeholder, not, like, a literal person. <laughs> I, I hope that makes sense. Um, but I realized that that was just, like, not possible for me. And um, I think once I got into filmmaking and doing that and realizing that that was just kind of what I was capable of and what I was doing and I wasn't really going to be able to do anything else. Um, I feel like I had some pretty great professors that were like, this is your thing, you know, this is how you, this is your work and that's okay. Um, and accepted kind of where I was with it. Cause I think I battled with it for a long time. Um, and I think that because my filmmaking and art making practice is so much about me, like I've made so many films where it was like when I go to crit or whatever critiques and I would talk about it, it would literally be like, I feel like shit. Like I, I made this one film that isn't, you know, like it's on my Vimeo, but like I made it like a freshman in college. And it's literally just me reading my journal entries where I'm talking about how much I hate myself. You know, and um, I was the the requirement of the, the film was to like make a project about something. And, and I, the film turned into me externalizing how I was struggling making a film about that project and talking about all of these things that I was that were, um, I guess, would be really vulnerable for other people. And I think it is vulnerable for me, but I have like an acceptance over that vulnerability. Um and I showed this film in class, and I think that it was the kind of thing that came very easily for me to do. I think it's it's easier for me to be my full self than it is for me to not. I, I hope that makes sense. Um, because, you know, I remember showing that and people being kind of like, wow, that's you're sharing your fucking journals. Like, that's so personal. And I was just kind of like, shrugs. Like, <laughs> like I don't know. It's just kind of like it just felt right. And I yeah. think that... Um, I think that the act of externalizing has always felt very normal to me. I think I'm I'm a very external person. I will tell anyone anything almost. I think the part that gets difficult for me now is the fact that I externalize and the reality of the situation is now that I've got a bigger reach, you know, it's not like just me and my friends or me and my film class, people who know me personally. It's like random people who don't know the full story of who I am. And I think sometimes there's that anxiety of like, I'm not just my depression. I'm not just my anxiety. I'm not, um, I'm, I sometimes get worried that people don't feel the full story or they just see me as someone who is, it's like, it's impossible. I feel like to be a completely well-rounded person on the internet. Like there's always going to be things people don't know. Mm. And I think that, I'm so open about the struggles that I'm afraid that people don't know my whole truth. And I think that that's probably the most difficult part, especially if I'm going through something. Um, like, it's hard to set boundaries, like in a, in a conversation, if it was just you and me and I was sharing something. And um, I was like, I'm feeling this, I'm going to externalize it, but I really don't need you to say you're sorry for me. Or I really don't need you to, um, I don't know, like, I don't want to be touched. I don't want to, you know, like, you know, you can set boundaries and conversations and like, those kind of things don't really happen when there's a lot of people replying to something. And sometimes I get like super flooded with like, people trying to like, empathize with me or tell me it's going to be okay and I'm like I know I don't need you know like it's like I do this thing that's very vulnerable and then it's like I and then I just want everyone to leave me alone a little bit and I think that's the hardest part it's not the act of externalizing it's the what comes after which is new for me I think I've always externalized and been vulnerable and that's always felt very natural to me but with the onset of social media and doing it so publicly, I think the aftermath of it is the hardest for me to deal with. Um, Cause it's not something I'm used to. And also as someone who's 
neurodivergent, you know, I have ADHD and all these things like just having to like engage with so many people <laughs> really, really difficult. Thankfully, I feel like most people are really understanding. Um, but at the same time, it's definitely like almost sometimes turns into this beast I don't really know what to do with that I'm still really grateful for, but it's also like ah <laughs> Yeah. And then I look at myself and I'm like, and you want to be a talk show host? Shit, you, you get mad about DMs, like, <laughs> not mad, but overwhelmed by DMs. Like, can you imagine, like, fucking fan mail or, like, whatever it comes with being, like, an even bigger public figure? Um, well, by I think then, that, that really... By then, you'll have, like, you know, your personal a team. assistant to answer your DMs. <laughs> I wish I had a personal assistant right now. I think about this all the fucking time. I'm like, if I could just have one person to do all of the shit that is so hard for me to do i'd be like a thousand times more productive but alas here i am <laughs> watching tlc <laughs> i think that's how we all feel sometimes i know i know life is is um is hard <laughs> i feel that um but him or yeah him, i'm curious like mm -hmm. you know how how have you gotten better or how do you set those boundaries on social media um i think like, you've been like i've seen you post something like like hey going through a lot right now don't be mad if i don't answer my dms for like three mm -hmm. weeks and i've seen yeah that before and been like all right i'll talk to morgan in a month or two yeah and yeah I, I, I got the, it's like you get the message there and it seems like that, mm -hmm. well I've, I've known you for a while so for me i'm like yeah oh, that works yeah yeah but, we've known each other for a very long time um i think that i think that a lot of what has needed to happen is my i've had to look into myself and go why do you feel guilty like why do you feel bad why do you feel remorse or um frustration after people do literally what is supposed to happen after this thing and i think that a lot of what the work has needed to be done is the acceptance over what comes next. It's still the hardest part for me, but I think it's getting easier because I just decided, like, I'm just not going to answer DMs anymore. Like, and like when I decided to start doing that, I was like, well, okay, are people just going to stop showing up? And if that's what happens and now I know, but I won't know unless I just do what I need to do for myself and see how the outcome is. And so I think I've just started to engage with social media in the way that makes me feel the most, um, I don't know, healthy, emotionally balanced and um, like just let the pieces fall where they may. I think that people who are going to be down for like, how I am are going to be down for how I am. And the people who aren't are probably just going to stop messaging me <laughs> or unfollow me or whatever. Um, Cause I'm really inconsistent. Like I will go like a week where I'm like posting all the time and I'm like really engaged with like whatever community is, you know, my community on social media and stuff. And then I'll just like disappear. And there's no warning, there's no schedule, there's nothing. I'm just like, I'm out. I don't want to be on social media right now. And then I just, I don't like, I feel like I try to be a normal person as much as possible on social media and not like an influencer and not like a person whose like job it is to show up on social media. Mm -hmm. Um because I know I, I probably could, like, I could probably, you know, make a lot of money if I was, like, you know, posting all the time and really engaging with my social media and whatever. But it's just, like, I don't know. I just, it doesn't make me feel healthy. Like, um, so I think that I've, more than anything, just accepted, try, I'm trying as much as I can to accept, like, just how I show up organically and, like, let that be what it is and not try to compare myself to people who fucking, you know, make a post and then spend the next, like, multiple hours, like, replying to comments or, you know, like, I will make a post on Instagram. And I post, like, once a month on, like, my actual Instagram account, like, stories, whatever. But I'll make a post and then 
a month will go by and I realize I never responded to the comments from my last post, you know, or like two posts. And I'm like, oh shit, like I've got like a whole backlog and I'll just go through and respond to them now. I'm like, I don't give a shit if it's been two months anymore. Like you're going to get what you get. And I feel like hopefully now people know that they, they can respond to me or DM me as much as they want. I make no promises. Mm -hmm. And I think I've just learned to not feel guilty about that. And I think everyone kind of knows that about me. Um, everyone. Who the fuck is everyone? But whoever is engaging with me, I think that... Um, I think that in the beginning, I really tried to be something that I wasn't. I, was, I tried to be more engaged. And I'm not that. And I just stopped trying to do that. And now it's kind of like... If you're down with it, then you're down. If not, then you're not, I guess. Um, and I'm trying to do that without feeling guilt, you know, without feeling like I need to be different. Um, if that makes, I keeps, I always end things with like, if that makes sense. That's like my, that's like my, um, my catch all like safe, like, hope that made sense. Ha ha. Like, you know, let me invalidate everything I just said yeah. because I'm insecure. Yeah, I, feel that. <laughs> I, have, I have my own catch all, which is like, I just end yeah. everything with like, I don't know what I'm talking about. And yeah, so, like, you do. And then I'm just like, yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get, I feel you on that. Yeah. Um, mine is, if that makes sense. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it, it does make sense. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. um, so Great. Cool. It sounds Good to like know. You're, you're getting to a place of like acceptance with, you know, how you want to be online. Yeah. Um, that guilt you were mentioning, is that just so I'm clear and like anyone listening is clear, is that guilt specifically like kind of related to not messaging people or answering them? Or is it more related to like, oh, like I should be more active on social media for. I guess why most a lot of people are so active is like for their careers like especially if you're a creative person if you're like oh, yeah oh, i'm doing this modeling i'm making this film i'm shooting doing this event like it's interesting that you you asked this question okay so <laughs> let's let's get some hot it was so interesting because i knew i was going to be on this podcast and i just had therapy yesterday and it was right. such a wild Big it was such a wild therapy Big shout out. Shouts out to therapy, okay? If you've ever thought about going to therapy, if you are listening to this and you're like, you know, I'm him and hawing, I don't fucking go. It's the best. I know not everyone can afford it, but there's also really good resources out there for affordable therapy. Sometimes therapists are willing to work with you. Um, my therapist is not on a sliding scale and doesn't take insurance, but she has been very lovely with reducing her rates as much as she could to help me out and um i don't know i'm i've been in therapy since i was in like like sophomore year of college so and i'm 25 so it's been a long time <laughs> and i don't see it stopping anytime soon you know she's gonna be in therapy forever probably i love it i'm like fucking addicted um which is you know problematic but i just love to work on myself it's a whole thing um I was in therapy and guilt was actually a very big thing that came up. Um, and I think, I mean, like, I really can't get into that. Cause I'd have to be like, and in my childhood, you know, and I'm not going to fucking do that. But basically guilt is a big problem in my life. Um, guilt. I have guilt around everything. I've pretty much like become the person who goes, there's bad people and there's good people. You know, there's good qualities and there's bad. I've like, I've I, like, since I was a kid, I think to make life easier, I just kind of divided things into good and bad, you know? And so if I'm not doing something that feels like it aligns with like good person qualities, then I'm bad person qualities. And then that brings guilt. So guilt is something that I struggle with a lot um, in like every aspect of my life. Um, I'm drinking coffee and I'm, I'm like a little burpy over here. I'm sorry about that. I don't think you can hear it, but <laughs> we, we can't hear it. But it's okay. I've just outed myself. It's fine. I'm very, I'm a gassy person out of all ends. <laughs> I don't care. Everyone can know. I don't give a fuck. Next time you see a billboard with my face on it to be like, she farts a lot. <laughs> don't forget the, the beautiful billboard is deceiving. I'm honestly really gross. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, guilt is a thing that I deal with. So guilt, I mean, it's everything that you mentioned. It's guilt of like career. I mean, I was just talking to my therapist about how I was like, I feel bad. I have guilt and feel bad because I don't really like value the same like career things that seem like I'm supposed to give a shit about them. Like I could never work a day <laughs> in my life again. If I could like chill at home and get paid to chill at home, I would do it because I don't like to work. And I feel guilty about that because it's been instilled in me from like being a black person, having family members who, you know, work really hard to like try to get as much as they can in the world, which, you know, capitalism, but whatever. Um, it's like this, this, this idea that like, I'm not doing what I am expected to do. And therefore I feel guilty. And it's not that I don't work, okay? Like, I'm not, I do work, and I love the things that I uh, that I enjoy doing, you know, that make me money, and that's great. But um, I feel like I often have guilt for, like, being my true self. So, um, and if it doesn't, like, I have this, it almost feels like I have this ideal version of myself in my head, this ideal version of, like, if I was the best version of myself, the best version of a person, of, of like any person that could ever exist, this is what it would be. And then any time I stray from that, which is very frequently because I am a flawed and complicated human being, I, I have to deal with learning acceptance over like showing up exactly as I am and not as I feel like I should. And that is like a huge struggle for me. And I can't wait until we talk about this shit. Because I'm just like, oh my god, I wish I could just like love myself the way I am. But instead, I'm like, every day I wake up and I just like try to not tell myself I'm a piece of shit for like the whole day, you know? Um, and I think that that for a lot of people who love me, and that's like part of what I was telling my therapist. I was like, it sucks because like I have a lot of friends you, my partner, friends that I've had for years, people I've met just like within the past few years that I feel close to, that would never look at me and say that about me. You know, they would never be like, oh, you're a piece of shit because you like don't have these qualities that you value as like necessary and important to being a good person. Um, but um, I still really struggle with this idea of like, of um, like, oh, that's not reality. You know, like, even though these people are real and they're in my life and they know me like in an interpersonal way, their their opinions of me aren't real, you know, like this really fucked up opinion of myself is the real one because I've been validating that opinion of myself for the past 25 years of my life. Mm -hmm. um, so that is what I struggle with. Um, and I think I'm slowly like it feels almost like I'm building like a statue. You know, you have a big piece of marble and you're just like chipping away. And I feel like every year I'm kind of like chipping away at these pieces of myself that I'm like having more acceptance over, you know, like the social media thing, like the you're never going to engage with social media in this idealized way that you think you should chip, 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 you know, OK, we're learning that that's fine. We're learning that it's OK to be that way. And that's not even something I'm going to worry about anymore. So now let's focus on this other area that I don't have acceptance over, you know, Um that was a very long-winded answer to your question, but... It's okay. It was a, you know, I think it was a really detailed answer. <laughs> yeah, ask me a question. I'll talk for, like, 40 hours about it and be like, did I answer the question? No, I think <laughs> I probably good. answered that question and, and five other ones. <laughs> no, you're good. And I'm, I'm wondering, like, um, you know, you obviously, you know, you're a filmmaker and you model mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do photography. Is, do any of the issues that you've, like you've just talked about anything you struggle with personally do you see that a lot um in other people you work with in like the multiple industries you work in or yeah do you feel like I it's think, kind of isolated to each individual i think that it's been really nice i think being an open person makes it really easy to get other people to open up 
And I think that that's like the thing I value most in connection and relationships. And the more that I learn, isn't that like, we really, none of us are alone. You know, the, we kind of all suffer from the same problems in different ways. And it all comes from different places, you know, like everyone grew up differently. Everyone was impacted by media differently. Everyone had different life experiences. But there is kind of this universal experience of feeling like you're not enough. Mm -hmm. This universal experience of feeling like you could be better or um, you should be different. And... um, I don't know. I mean, I could, I could, (laughs) I mean, I'm always like capitalism, colonization, (laughs) big button words, but that's really, I mean, like, you know, the powers that be benefit from us kind of hating ourselves. So it makes sense that we all kind of hate ourselves, you know? Um, And that's all I'm going to say about that because this is not like a politically, (laughs) we're not like having that conversation right now. And I feel like I would probably need to read, a few more books before I could really start laying down some facts, but, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's like, that sounds like a hot topic for definitely the next episode of the, that's Christmas another podcast. day. That's, that's another day. That's and we'll get my clue episode two. Yeah. Honestly, I can't, my, um, uh, my boyfriend whom I love is very, um, well-versed in kind of like understanding the history of a lot of the problems that we face and, in like contemporary modern times and he reads a lot and educates me every day and kind of like all of these things that we're dealing with it's just history repeating itself and like these are how people in different countries have solved this problem and you know like that and so it's this thing where i'm like i like have like these little tastes of information but i'm kind of like he's like my backup died like like thesaurus where i'm always like matt like, can you tell me what that thing is called? I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I again, like I was saying, I just think that it's, I think it's very common. Um, I think that even though it is common, it still feels very isolating because the reality is that no one knows exactly your experience. No one knows exactly like what thing your fucking, you know, fucking uncle said to you when you were five years old, that's traumatized you forever and has made it so that it's impossible to do this one thing without, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, maybe my uncle will hear this, but probably not. I, I remember my uncle used to call me annoying when I was a kid. He used to just say I was annoying. And for years, I felt self-conscious anytime I talked to anyone because I felt that I was annoying, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like this thing where like everyone feels self-conscious about something in the way that they present themselves to the world. But of course, no one's like my uncle also when I was (laughs) used to call me annoying and, you know, um, so it's, it's definitely, it's personal and it's also kind of universal. Um, it's, it's interesting kind of like talking to other models and being like are is anyone else self-conscious like when you're doing this job because i am always self-conscious when i'm doing this job and um a lot of models are like it's it's a very common feeling i feel like now not for everyone i think um you know usually talking to models that have certain access Maybe they don't relate as much to what it feels like to be a fat black woman in the modeling world. Um, but by access, you just mean like skinny white girl, or absolutely <laughs> <laughs> skinny white girl who makes a lot of funny and you know books a lot. Um, people who've been working since they were sixteen and like have never stopped. You know, mm-hmm. they definitely don't have the same experience that I do. But um, I mean, thanks for saying it. I just, you gotta make it clear for people. I know, I'm like trying not to be too spicy, but I guess we can just be spicy. No, I, I, um, I had a shoot once where every person on the set was a woman of color of varying sizes. And then there was this one thin white woman on the set and we were all like, oh yeah, like you have body image issues and we're all kind of, relating to that and it was like this nice solidarity and then i asked her i was like do you ever feel she's like no (laughs) it's like uh 
okay. <laughs> She's like, why? <laughs> no, why? And I was like, oh, Jesus. Okay, well. <laughs> Very different life, life, you know. Mm -hmm. Very different lifestyle than me. Um, but yeah, again, along with an answer to your question, which I could have just said yes. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> that would make for an interesting podcast, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, talk to your co-host about it. I just said yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Nice. Wait, Morgan, do you have any, like, um, daily... Or like weekly, do you have any like day, yeah practices that you do to like <sighs> help yourself along this process that you're like, yeah, I do that thing and like I do recommend that to other people or like I do know that this helps more than just me. I sighed so deeply. I don't know if you heard it. It's because I, I don't, and it's problematic. <laughs> I I've gone through many phases of my life where I was really on top of certain things. And I've fallen out of things. Um, I have ADHD. That's like a, it's probably been about a year into a diagnosis. So I feel almost like <laughs> my daily practices that I try to do. First of all, there's nothing that I do every single day other than take my medication. There's nothing I do every single day because I'm not like I don't want to use the word stable but I'm not like um as well versed at managing my ADHD as I probably will be in the future so right now taking care of anything every single day is almost like impossible because every day I wake up and I'm just like in a different place and the difference between me now because you know ADHD is something that is you gr you're like born with it you know like you've had it since you were a kid um but what i'm trying to do now and it's been a conscious effort when i was younger i did a lot of masking which is where you try to appear neurotypical you perform in ways and i think that's you know if we're going back to the topic of guilt um me trying to fit in with others me trying to operate the way other people did and that's just very exhausting so I have in the past year kind of let myself just be exactly as I am, you know, as chaotic <laughs> and all over the place as as I ever have been in my entire life. And I'm trying to then, while letting myself naturally be, um, with that, I'm trying to work in systems mm -hmm. of things. So rather than going from this, like my therapist that I have now is she specializes in ADHD and um, I was like, I just want to get help. I don't want to be this way anymore. And she said like, before you can get help, you have to have acceptance. So right now I'm working on the acceptance part of that. Um, so there's nothing that I'm like trying to do every day and kind of like stick to regiment wise, other than like one of the things I try to do is like make myself lists. So like, and that's like really basic stuff. Um, but that has really helped me just to, like, have some kind of <laughs> organization in my life. So, and the lists are really basic. They're just, like, literally, like, take your pills, eat your breakfast, take a shower, you know, um, whatever you have to do today. Um, but I don't have any kind of, like, meditation practices. I don't have any, like, sit down and read for 30 minutes or go on a walk or anything like that that I do to keep myself grounded on a regular basis. And I probably should. That's something that um, I've had success with in the past. But like I said, with ADHD and masking, there's kind of like, you can only keep up with things for so long until your brain's kind of like, nah, <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to find the right balance. Um, I definitely like, I don't know. I think, I think, I will say the one thing that I try to give myself every day consciously is a little bit of joy and relaxation. Um, what that looks like is different every day. I really love playing video games like so much. I re-realized that during the pandemic. I used to love them as a kid and kind of was shamed out of playing video games as I grew older because they were 
for kids or for boys or whatever, you know, whatever judgment things I heard as I was growing up that kind of stopped me from playing video games, but I'm learning I love them. Um, I'm trying to learn the balance between like, when is it fun and when does it turn into like a coping mechanism that's unhealthy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but like playing little video games, um, you know, like making myself something nice to eat, going outside, texting friends, calling a friend. Um, I just feel like I'm learning that I really value joy mm -hmm. and I really value fun. <laughs> and so I try to keep those things at the forefront of like my reality and my world as much as I can. Um, I really ground myself with my cat. I know that that's like, everyone probably does that, but I didn't have a pet before her. So she's my first pet. And um, that's like something I do consciously do. If I'm feeling like overwhelmed or I'm feeling um, like I just need a break. Like if I, like when I came home from therapy yesterday, the first, I was like going to my car. I was like, I'm so excited to see my cat. Cause I knew I was just going to sit on the couch and she was going to come up and I was just going to be able to sit there and like pet her, which is like a physical thing to do. That's physically calming. Mm -hmm. um, and not everyone has a cat. So, and, and not all cats are nice. <laughs> And not all of them want to be pet. So I feel like I lucked out with that one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's no like um, daily practices. I mean, I used to journal a lot. I've been thinking about getting into that again. Um, but again, like that like shame and guilt thing. I'm like, you're not actually a good writer, which is like stupid because journaling isn't about other people reading it. But I can't like seem to shake that sometimes. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think every day I, I try to embrace some joy. I ground myself with my, with my animal or with food or with TV or whatever. I try to just like be in my body and be present for a few m moments when I can, when I think about it with, if it comes up to me, I try to honor that feeling. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know. I feel like I'm always just kind of in my head thinking a lot. Um, if I, if something like, I don't know, if I like think, if I realize that I'm like, um, I've been doing a lot of work recently on sexual trauma and engaging with my own trauma that I endured when I was younger that I have pretty much swept under the rug for like years, you know, 10 years. Um, so that's been kind of like what I've been working on recently. I love how that's like, people are like, oh, I'm working on a project. I'm like, I'm working on my sexual trauma. Um, but that's like my project. That's no, I mean, that's the joke and that's super real. <laughs> and it's like, those are things you got to like work. Sometimes those are things you got to work on, right? Like before yeah. you work on I anything whatever, else, whatever else you want to work on. Yeah, I genuinely feel like this is like my work, like this mental health shit is my work. And I know that someday I'll have the capacity to do things like start a podcast to do things like maybe finish like, you know, take more photos, make a photo book. Some like there's so many things I want to do in my life. But this feels like the most important work I can do right now, because once I start feeling more grounded and accepting of my own self, it's going to make everything else easier. It's going to make things fall into place. I hope. I mean, you know, I don't know what the future holds, but. <laughs> but we'll see. We're, you know, we're all excited for what your future holds because it's going to be fun. That's for sure. I hope so. I'm all into fun, man. I, I just want everyone to have fun, you know? Well, that's why we're friends. Like, I, you know? I know. We both value a good time. And, uh, you know, not to be, not to be a fuck boy on Tinder, um, <laughs> but I'm here for a good time, not a long time, baby, you know, <laughs> fucking I could die any day. Um, Matt's hearing that in the background. He's like, what? <laughs> when is she going to dump me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> no, but, um, uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that like, I think that. I had this like really big realization like within the past year where I, I don't know. I feel like I turned 25 and like a lot of like my mental state changed 
And I was like, I could really die any day, you know? And I think I've, rather than feeling like, I think my, the way I used to think about my mental health was all of this shit is getting in the way of me doing the real shit I want to do with my life, which is the photo book, the podcast, the whatever. And I think that I've, I've started to accept that this is my work, you know, like there might be other shit down the line and that would be great. There's things I want to do and accomplish and um, give to the world of me at some point, but this is also the work. Like if I die, I'd t I mean, I think like a year ago, if I was like, if I died tomorrow, I used to be so afraid of death because I was like, I'm not done yet. Like, I don't feel like I've done enough, you know? And I feel like now, not that any, like, I think the same amount of work I've, I've, I, I haven't really done much since those things have that, since I thought that mm -hmm. it's just that now I have acceptance over like, maybe this is my life's work. Maybe my life's work is just like being a better version of me and having more acceptance over that. And that's okay. And like, if I died tomorrow, I'd be happy. Not like, I, I don't want to die. I really love being alive. I love living, which is funny for someone who's got um, manic depressive disorder. <laughs> but I do love being alive. I think like living is such a beautiful gift that we both get to experience because we're both sitting here right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like the sun is beautiful and like experiences are beautiful and so um, impactful. And like every day I'm like, life is such a gift. And I think that that really keeps me going through the tough times, you know, um, I think even with all of it, I'm really happy to be alive. I'm really happy that I get to like do this work. Yeah. I am now. I used to think it was a burden, but now I'm like, like shit i don't know like every day i'm like kicking man i'm getting stronger yeah and you know that's so cool <laughs> yeah it's super cool to hear you talk about it and how you're able to you know work on that acceptance you've been talking about this whole time and be able to so like um clearly express that gratitude for being alive mm -hmm. despite like the highs and the lows and then like mm -hmm. back to the highs <laughs> back to life. yeah like you know it's cool to yeah really be able to express all of that and just be like you know at the end of the day the sun's out and like you're right you're glad to you're happy to be here because you know we're happy to have you i know i'm happy to be here i just being able to be on this podcast is such a gift like this is such a cool way to spend an afternoon <laughs> yeah, um, we appreciate you coming on so <laughs> i mean yeah really thanks for having me um, I was going to say one more thing that my therapist, if this resonates with anyone and this is something that they're interested in looking into, I'm not in this type of therapy, but it's, there's literally therapy based around acceptance. Like that is, you know, I can't remember exactly what it's called. I'd have to look it up and I don't want to waste people's time with like weird silence while I'm like scrolling in my phone, looking for the email she sent me. <laughs> um, but it's a real thing and i feel like the biggest key to my life within the past few years and being able to like feel better about everything that i am and everything that's going on is acceptance mm -hmm. acceptance work has been the most valuable work for me um because acceptance is the act of like literally accepting that like oh like there are things i can't change there are things that i can't control this is happening right now and it's okay mm -hmm. you know and um i don't know i think that like it's almost like um letting the river just kind of course you know rather than trying to like force it to like go straight just like letting it letting it flow however it's gonna go um so yeah, if anyone is like, I could use a dose of that, I would just like Google the words acceptance therapy, because it's like a real practice. Like there's actual like steps and like, like, I don't know, rules or like guidelines, like there's stuff that I haven't actually done research in, but it's something that I've like kind of circled around for a long time. And I think that it's really benefited me. So, you know, just throwing out, throwing out my little... My little tips for people. It might help. You know, even if there's one person who looks it up. You know, that's nice. 
Yeah, totally. And that's <laughs> yeah. a great way, I think, to think about it. It's like that one person might just be like, oh, what is that? And they'd be like, wow, yeah. this really helped. And you know what? That's how a lot of things in my life have changed. Like, it's like you listen to something and like one sentence resonates with you and you're like, oh, I want to look into that. Like, mm -hmm. that, I mean, the other day I was listening to um, sexual trauma, like podcasts and things like that. And someone said something about like, orgasms are mental and i'd never thought about them that way because i feel like everyone thinks about them as this physical thing and i was like oh they like are in the mind and just like that sentence made me rethink a lot of the way i have thought about like you know sex relationships intimacy all of this stuff and i was just like just one sentence man you never know like how impactful that can be and how maybe they said that and they were like this is the dumbest one sentence that we have in this podcast but we'll just leave it in <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll never know, but I'll never know, but it really helped me out. So, you know, I give I give my offerings knowing that it might not help everyone, but it might help one person. So that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah. Hey, Morgan, so. there's like one more thing I wanted to ask you, which was Yeah. Um since we like try to get everyone on here who does like something mm -hmm. creative project yeah i mentioned that you're on billboards earlier <laughs> could you just tell us a little bit about your journey getting into getting into modeling and like where that's yeah i mean you were just in new york uh i, I was you were modeling or shooting i don't know which one you were doing i was i was modeling okay, yeah nice yeah Congrats. and i know you just so, dropped that you. um that video you did for big bud press which looked really good by the way Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I so I've always been big into fashion. I think that it's like this really um, hilarious curse as like a fat person to be so into fashion because it's like forever like it's such a pain in the ass because it's so hard to find like really cute shit. <laughs> sometimes it's gotten better but when i was a kid it was like i was i was like a hunter you know for like i wanted to be like the fat girl who had the outfits you know like it was like very important to me to be cute and um it's kind of started when i was in college i started doing like ootd outfit of the day posts on like tumblr you know <laughs> oh, nice and um Oh, I know. God, the golden days, man. It's just not the same anymore. Corporate Tumblr sucks, all right? We should have just left that shit independent. Who cares if there was porn? Have you seen Twitter, okay? Why did y'all ruin my favorite place? It's TikTok? fine. I mean, huh? I, was like, I mean, have you seen TikTok? Yeah! Back up, man. Anyway. <laughs> I'm salty. Tumblr used to be my place. Um... I think I got a little too old for it either way. But when I was in college, <laughs> it was really, I was on Tumblr. I was doing my outfit of the day pose. I had like a little bit of a following on there, which was cool. And um, I was like kind of transferring some of that stuff to Instagram. And what ended up happening was Big Bud Press was, I think, like one or two years old at the time. I think it, they must have been like two, like two-ish years old. So, so you're and still in college at this point. I was in college. Okay. Yeah. And um, I think they just kind of like, like, I was probably like, towards the end of my college life, like they started following me, I was kind of on their radar, and a friend of mine was their photographer. And, um, you know, I was a big fan of them, but it was kind of like, not really like nothing had happened at the time. Um, towards the end of my time in college, my friend reached out to me was like, Oh, they want to have you on like this shoot. I was like, cool, great. And then, like, nothing happened for a really long time. Um, and then, like, I graduate college. I end up seeing my friend in their store. Because at that point, they had opened a brick and mortar in Echo Park. And my friend was working there. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, hi, nice to see you. Blah, blah, blah. You still doing photography for them? Um, and my friend was like, let me just take photos of you now and send them to them. And see if they're, if like, the owners. Like, like if you're they're interested. And I was like, because I had never modeled at this point. Um... Oh, that's right. I forgot. And at the time, I had just gotten back from a trip to Utah because my film that I had made at the end of college had gotten into a festival, which was really cool. And there was a photographer who took portraits of everyone in Utah. And she was like, oh, like, you know, you could model, you know, like, oh, you, you know, it seemed like you, you were really natural in front of a camera. And I was like, that's really nice to hear. You know, like, I was like, oh, like took that little, little uptick, my self-confidence. 
And I was like, when I got back to LA, I was like, I would, it'd be cool to do this, you know? So I kind of told my friend who was a photographer, I was like, are they interested? And she was like, they were like, let me just take pictures now. And like, they took pictures of me. I, they sent them. They were like, yeah, cool. Let's have her in, you know? And I just modeled for Big Bud. Like, it was February of like 2017 or 18. I mean, it was, I think it was 20. Oh, it was 2019. Anyway, um, I modeled, and ever since then, I've just been working with them. Um, and then, because Big Butt is such a, like, kind of, like, L.A. cult brand, <laughs> no, no. Um, they totally are. Um, you know, a lot of other people started recognizing me and, like, reaching out and asking me to shoot with them. And it's just been kind of this, like, freelance thing that I was doing for a while, and then with like a couple months ago, I got an agent. And so now I've just been like doing more stuff. Um, it's kind of cool because that's like, I feel like more than anything, that's like my primary source of income, which is like pretty wild. Oh, wow. um, I would have never guessed that <laughs> in the past. I would have never been like going out of college, like, you know, in like five years, you're going to be a model. <laughs> That's, you're going to do that for most of your time. Um, but yeah, it definitely wasn't expected. And I think I really appreciate modeling because I come from a photo and film background. Like, um, I think it's kind of nice to be, not everyone likes it. Cause I, you know, a lot of people are behind the camera because they don't want to be in front of it. But, um, I like both, you know, um, and also as a fat person, it's kind of great to, um, like, use my body in this way that I never got the opportunity to as a young person to, like, value it, to love it, to present it to people. Um, it's, like, this really cool gift that's sometimes very daunting and scary because I don't always feel that good about myself. Um, and it's vulnerable, but it's, like, really, it's a really nice challenge, I think. Especially in the beginning, it really was a challenge for me to show up and work and i think i liked that aspect of it um because again it was kind of like chipping away at that marble you know mm -hmm. this is just another one of those things so that's my background in modeling and now big bud i've been with big bud for like three to four years now modeling with them um they are my current employer so that's really cool um that they've like you know taken me onto their team like officially and like a more like legitimize sense mm -hmm. um and uh you know it's they do billboards and i'm just on them it's super weird yeah. <laughs> like, it's super shooting. weird and you're shooting for them now yeah it's been um it's been kind of like a like trial trial and error sort of thing i think i'm realizing that i really love content conceptualizing and i like editing more than i actually like the act of filming um i think that filming has always been like a source of anxiety for me and it's not something that i fully feel comfortable doing professionally and being like here i'm gonna make sure i i get you something beautiful like if you gave me footage and were like edit this for me i'd be like sure like i feel very confident in my editing abilities because i've always been good at it it's kind of like the way I feel like I have a gift for writing. I feel like I have a gift for editing. Um, but I've been talking to them about, like, you know, switching from, like, actually doing, like, camera holding and video recording to being more of the con concept and uh, and post-production person. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably going to how my, be how my role shifts. Um, but I am on their team, on their creative team, which is cool. Like, I haven't had a creative job ever, you know? Like, I was, I was, like, working in the film industry, but, like, under other people, I wasn't making any creative content. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really cool and challenging to be doing that all of a sudden because it feels very, like, I have to value myself, <laughs> which is hard some days. You have to value yourself before other people can give you a chance. You know, you have to be like, yes, I can do this, you know? And uh, some days I wake up and I'm like, uh. <laughs> right. it just, it goes back to uh, back to the acceptance you were talking about. Back to that acceptance, yeah. And luckily, Big Bud is such a generous and loving company. I really feel like I have this 
um, beautiful symbiotic relationship with them. I've been working with them for so long. They have, you know, done so much for me, just like in my personal life, in my professional life. And um, so I feel very, very lucky to be with them in a more like legitimized sense as opposed to just like a freelance mm -hmm. model with them. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's like this weird thing where like, it feels like my life is kind of settling in this weird way that when I was like 21, I would have never guessed that I would like have like a job <laughs> and like stability, <laughs> and, like living, living in a house, like far away from not far, but like away from my family, you know? Um, it's weird. Like, I don't know. It's, it's like, I can't even imagine what the next five years is going to hold when I'm like 30, you know? Yeah. I'm really excited though. I feel like I'm going to be fucking lit. I'm going to be 30 years. I'm going to be the baddest bitch when I'm 30. I don't even like, don't even fucking come for me, man. <laughs> I'm so fucking ready. <laughs> oh, I'm so, I'm psyched to be there. I'm psyched to pull up for the 30th birthday party. I'm psyched to see what I, my... in the next five years. <laughs> My 30th birthday party is going to be like the bash of the fucking century. I'm finally going to have my rooftop. I want to have a rooftop party so bad. Like I have a running playlist on Spotify that I've been curating for years with the bangers. Yeah, it's, I know it's only bangers. Like It's fucking bangers. So you're, you're invited, you know, if you want to be invited to my 30th birthday in five years, any listeners out there, you know, hit me up. But don't do and, that. Uh, but don't DM me. Send a carrier pigeon or like right in the sky. Um, shoot me an email. I'm literally more likely to get back to you via email than via a DM because I actually feel like emails are like important. <laughs> DMs, I'm like, no. <laughs> and my email's on my Instagram. Like you could email me. It's not hard to, to email me. Like don't, you know, like don't do that. But like if you really need to. <laughs> If you really want to be invited to this this birthday in the next five years, you know, um, oh, Matt. Matt has come to join the party. Are you going to be here for my 30th birthday bash? We'll see. You'll see. I think so. <laughs> I hope so. Okay. And there he goes. He's gone now. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I'm sure I've rambled everyone's ears off for quite a bit now. <laughs> no, I think you're good. Um, but yeah, Morgan... Thanks so much. I feel like this is like a great place to yeah to break, to break for lunch. No. <laughs> <laughs> to close off. Yeah, I know. A great. This is a great place to send it off. But yeah. No, Morgan. Thanks exactly. so much for coming on to the podcast yeah, and for being so course. vulnerable and like sharing your experience and like telling us like all this awesome stuff about how you are growing, how you're planning on growing, and like yeah. providing whatever tips you do have. And just talking about like your experience, like you know, working yeah. across these fields. Um, I really, yeah. Thank you for having me on. I feel like this was a. Uh, I I really appreciate that I got to talk about mental health, and it's it wasn't just about like art because I feel like my art practice is like really not my focus in life, and I really love that you you see that and you value that, and I like I don't know Saranga hats off to you man oh. i appreciate you thank you for your work my friend thank you <laughs> yeah, well, i appreciate you all our friends so you know I, i've seen you doing like the mental health stuff for a while and i was like damn like that's really sweet that like, <laughs> that you're doing that so, yeah man just trying to not die <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> oh man all right well Thanks for having me again. And I guess, you know, maybe next time. Maybe I'll have you on my podcast in the next five years, you yes. know. Oh, and maybe Morgan, someday. if people want to find you, uh, where should they go? Where should they follow uh, you? What are the socials? <laughs> I would say that Instagram is the only social media that I actually engage with in any capacity. So if you're trying to find me, Instagram at Morgan Lily, L I L Y. Full disclosure, there is a child actress with that exact name who's been trying to get my Instagram name for years. Oh, she's trying to buy it's it. It's never going to happen. Yes. How much? She she I've never I've never talked to her about it. I just delete the comments. I hope she's not listening to this and she's like that bitch. 
<laughs> and she's like legit. Like she was an X Men. Like she's like a real actress. Oh, she might be paying for the thirtieth birthday party. She. <laughs> she's like in exchange for me paying for your thirtieth birthday. I would like to have your Instagram name, please. Um, but anyway, if you look me up and you see a, a blonde white girl, that's not me. Um, that's not. <laughs> Yeah, I know. All right. Well, now everyone knows where to find you and who who not to follow. Um, yeah, not that's not me. I'm I'm the other one. I'm the I'm the black one with curly hair. So, there you go. hi. All right, guys. Morgan, thank you again, and thank you to everyone who's listened today. Um, yeah. Peace out, y'all. Bye. Thank you. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode with Morgan Zoli. If you want to learn more about Morgan and what she's up to, follow her on Instagram at Morgan Lily. If you want to know more about the duplex and about Demo Blank or come to one of our upcoming events, follow us at Demo Blank on Instagram and visit us on our website at demoblank.com. Today's episode was produced by Alex Fakuda with audio engineering by Shane Valentine and our theme song by Dr. Doppler. Thanks, guys.